What is going on, friend? Welcome back to the Breath of Heaven podcast. Thank you for joining us. In this episode, we talk about the prayer of adoration. So this is the last uh, message in the series, The Foundations of Prayer. We have covered all different aspects of a private and public prayer life with God. If you have missed those, you are welcome to scroll back through the podcast or back through our YouTube channel, and you can find all different aspects of prayer that we have covered in this series, but this is the beginning and the end, adoration for God and spending time in worship with Him. This is a short message, but I hope that it gives you life and inspires you in your walk with the Lord. There's an A.W. Tozer quote, and I have a few of them that I'm going to share tonight. But the first one would be this. It's from a book called The Pursuit of God, and it said, Man's chief end is to glorify God and enjoy Him forever. Tonight we're going to talk about adoration, specifically prayer of adoration. Adoration is both the perfect beginning and ending of prayer, a place to start, to continue, and to finish our conversations with Him. To know God is to love Him. And to have intimate relationship with him. To spend time together with him, both in secret and in community. Matthew chapter 6, verse 9, the famous verse that we go back to, says, Pray then in this way, our Father who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Adoration can be defined as deep love, respect, and worship. When we adore someone... It means that they take the center stage in our hearts. This is where God should stay always. However, often, if we're honest, our hearts drift from him being our primary focus. On the contrary, the closer we grow to him, the less distracted we become by other idols. Your greatest idol is the thing that you spend the most time thinking about, and further, the thing that you prioritize the highest in your life. John Tyson says it this way, idolatry is the worship of an unworthy object. You prioritize what you prize the most in your life and you follow the one that you have the most respect for. The best way to keep Jesus at the center of your life and the lead of your life is adoration. Adoration defeats idolatry. Adoration both exalts the name of Jesus in the earth and gives us the heart needed to be his follower. Psalm 100 verse 4 says, Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him, bless his name, for the Lord is good. His loving kindness is everlasting and his faithfulness to all generations. There was a song made popular by a band uh, called Delirious. Do you guys ever heard the song, My Soul Sings? My soul sings, my soul sings, my soul sings, how I love you. Did you know that you can worship God with your soul? One of the most common things Uh, that I've heard in the Bible Belt since moving here is that you can't and shouldn't worship with your emotions. You're actually not meant to, and and the the scripture quoted is that the heart is deceitful. But do you know that you can bring your emotions and your heart in line with your spirit and with the Holy Spirit to worship and honor the Lord? And I actually believe this is one of the things that keeps us from connecting to God the most, is bypassing our emotions being involved. Psalm 108 verse 1 says, My heart is steadfast, O God, and I will sing, I will sing praises even with my soul. David was filled with emotion both for God and for the things of this world, and a case can be made for both positive and negative fruit when we observe the life of David. But the thing that we all know David as was someone that was known to be after the Lord's heart. His desire was for God. The Holy Spirit living in us as believers leads us in worship. When we come in line with the Holy Spirit, the helper, to magnify Jesus, our soul, our mind, our will, and our emotions get involved. In fact, the more we spend time worshiping him, the more our heart longs to spend time with him. 
One of the beautiful things about David's life is he would make terrible decisions and immediately hit the floor before the Lord because his heart broke that he had stepped outside of communion with God. As I once heard it explained, when you eat food, you become full and lose desire to have more of it. When you delight in God and his presence, you will desire more and more time with him. You never get fully filled. Satisfied, yes, but always longing to have more time with him. David was a warrior, and yet he had a tender heart toward God. Did you know that you can be strong and walk in power and yet be humble and tender before God? All of the most powerful men and women of God that I have known knew how to pray with adoration for the Lord. To stop, to be still, and to turn their affection on Jesus. In John chapter 4, verse 23 says, But an hour is coming, and now is, when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For such a people, the Father seeks to be his worshipers. Did you know that there is a type of person that the Father actually seeks to worship him? This verse says that he seeks true worshipers who worship in spirit and in truth. And in verse 24 it says, God is spirit and those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. The point of this series is to grow as worship-hearted people that love Jesus And put him first above everything else in our lives. Our prayer life is completely intertwined with our ability to worship Jesus in spirit and truth. When you think of taking time to worship, chances are you think of music and song. As many of us do. And this is often our expression of worship. But while the musical expression of worship is amazing, valuable, and needed, taking time to point our attention and affection to God is one of the most pure and simple things and offerings that we can give him. I think one of God's main love languages is quality time. Wherever you are taking a moment to close your eyes and tell him that you thank him or you love him can immediately bring you into a place of adoration. Consistently honoring the, the leaning into his presence with cause, will cause your life to flow from a place of intimacy. Knowing his voice and sensing his leading Worshiping him in spirit and in truth all flow from time spent with him. So a couple weeks ago, I had the kids and Jess was at a meeting and I spent the evening, uh, you know, just looking in their eyes, taking time with them. I feel like in this season of my life, especially, I'm really trying to be super intentional to not have my phone in my hand and not be busy and not get work done, especially when I have my nights alone with the kids. And so I spent the evening with my kids, playing with them, watched the movie, wrestled, did all the things. And I put them all to bed, and I was upstairs washing dishes. I know this sounds like I'm talking myself up as a good husband, but I'm not. (laughs) But this is my night. And so I I flipped on Instagram, and there's an artist that I really like. And he was doing like a live stream of his new album coming out. And so he's just playing acoustic and talking about the songs. And he gets to a song, and the song is all about like how quick our kids grow up and how fast it, it flies by and just the importance of stopping and taking the moments. And so like I feel this tug on my heart. Now mind you, I've like literally just spent the whole night alone with my kids. So I'm already vulnerable to like, you know, being a dad, kid like moments and this is super, super like my focus for the evening on top of every other day. But I have this moment and so I listen to the album version of the song after I put him to sleep and I, I put it on and it's got this real, like, southern twang to it. The acoustic version didn't. So the acoustic version was just an acoustic guitar and, and a voice. And it was beautiful, but the album version had this real, like, southern guitar part to it. And so I listened to it, and I just start crying. And I was like, you know that, like, ache cry when you're like, oh, my gosh, like, my kids are, like, I literally only have, like, so many years. And, like, all this stuff's flashing before my eyes. And I have, like, a, a, a heavy cry. And so I text my wife. And she's, I know she's about to leave this meeting, and I send her the song, and I was like, hey, babe, if you need a good cry on the way home, like, check this song out. And I thought it was sweet, and we do stuff like that. And so I send her this song, and immediately had the thought, 
if this song doesn't make my wife cry, it's because of that guitar part. Like, I'm sure of it, because I know that that's not her taste. And the guitar part was like the intro of the song. And so I have this thought, and I'm like, whatever, she's going to cry. And so she gets home, and I'm like, hey, babe, did you listen to the song? She's like, yeah, it was, it was nice. And I was like, didn't it make you cry? And she's like, well, no, but like, you're really sweet, babe. Like, I'm glad that it made you cry. <laughs> and she walked out of the room, and I thought about it, and I was like, did the guitar part get you, like, keep you from crying? And she just started laughing hysterically, because it was the truth. Like, the guitar part was the thing that threw her off. What's the point of the significance of this story? I know my wife. Because we've spent so much time together, I know the things that she likes, the things that she doesn't like, the thing that might make her cry, but the guitar part's going to kill it. I know this about my wife. And the more time, the point of the story is, the more time that you spend with someone and take interest in them, the more that you know their thoughts and how they'll react to something. The more time we spend with Jesus, the more we will know his likes and his dislikes. Don't let him be just a God that you read about. Take time to know him personally. Bill Johnson said in a quote that I love, if I have 10 minutes to pray, I'll spend the first eight minutes in prayer and worship and praise and worship and spend the last two in prayer. So maybe you're saying to yourself, this all sounds really nice and this sounds sweet, but I don't really even know where to start sometimes. And if I'm totally honest, there's a lot of times that I don't either. I feel like sometimes worshiping Jesus feels like breathing to me. It's very natural. And in fact, a friend of mine the other day pointed out, I started to sing a song randomly, and he said, you sing that song all day. And I was like, what are you talking about? He said, you literally sing that song six times a day. And I was like, what? What do you mean? And he said, I've counted. You sing that song five to six times every day. I literally didn't even realize it. But so sometimes it's like natural, right? It's an outflow of our life. And then sometimes I go to spend time with God, and I'm like, I don't, I don't even know what to say. Like, I just feel like out of sync or out of rhythm. Like, I don't know. Like, what do I say to God? You know? And sometimes there's, a, there's actually a lyric in a song. Um, sometimes you're further than the moon and sometimes you're closer than my skin. To share just another illustration, the other night, Jess and I got to go on a date night. And, you know, we don't get to take them often. And we went out and we sat down for dinner. And I said, babe, I feel so close to you because our hearts are turned towards each other and I know that they are like I think about you all the time you're you're like the top of my affection but there's always this awkwardness when we finally have a date night that we have to like any of you who are married or have been in long relationships you know the feeling I'm talking about where it's like we have to like reacclimate to like one-on-one -on -one time and I think it's the same thing with Jesus and then after we acclimate to it, we laugh and we dream and we like work through situations and we rest together. And it's the same thing with the Lord. There's a couple moments of awkward often when you go to spend time with him. And a lot of us bail in the first couple minutes of awkward. Not realizing that right after the first couple minutes of awkward, there's laughter, there's dreaming, there's rest, there's working through things, there's strength. A.W. Tozer says, the church waits for the tender voice of the saint who has penetrated the veil and has gazed with inward eye upon the wonder that is God. And yet this to penetrate, to push past the sensitive living experience into the holy presence is a privilege open to every child of God. Psalm 100 verse 4 says, enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his name. We enter his courts with thanksgiving and with praise. I wrote a song one time with a bunch of friends. We were on a, an RV trip up to a conference and I sat down with a guitar and the weather was beautiful and I was from Florida and it was never beautiful. It was always hot and it was like 10 degrees cooler than this and I was so inspired and I thought, I'm gonna write a song. And I sat outside and I had one of those moments that I didn't know what to say. And I wrote a song that said, what am I to say to a savior? And what can I even bring to a king? How do I approach the God of heaven? The song is called Sing Hallelujah. And that was the chorus that came out was I'll sing hallelujah. And it was really simple. But that's all I had. I'll just sing hallelujah. Daniel, if you want to lead us in a song, 
Um, Psalm chapter 27, verse 4 says, One thing I have asked from the Lord, and that shall I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to meditate in his temple. You become what you behold is one of the phrases that has stuck the most in my life. The less eloquent one is you are what you eat, but you become what you hold is much better. In the beginning, God made man and woman. He put them in a garden, right? We all know this story. And they walked with him in the cool of the day, every day, one on one, nothing between them, complete intimacy until they beheld something else. And as soon as they beheld something else, they hid themselves from the presence of God. And he still showed up to walk with them. But they weren't there. They chose not to show up one day. And he asked them. In Genesis 3 verse 8 it says, They heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God. Among the trees of the garden. Then the Lord God called to the man and said to him, Where are you? He said, I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid myself. And he said, Who told you that you were naked? Who put a lie in your mind? Who did you behold? What have you allowed in your life that put distance between me and you? Our culture will tell us all that we shouldn't be completely vulnerable before God. And I actually believe this is especially true for men. So my question tonight in this short message is, what are you beholding? Are you a man or a woman after God's heart? Strong and still tender towards the heart of the Lord? Prayer begins and ends with adoration, with turning our affection upon the Lord. And to close with one more Tozer quote for the night, God himself is here waiting our response to his presence. This eternal world will come alive to us the moment we begin to reckon upon its reality. Thanks for joining us for this podcast. I pray that it gave you encouragement and strength and life uh, in your walk with the Lord. If you want to find more resources from Breath of Heaven, you can visit our website at breathofheaveninc.org. That's breathofheaveninc.org. You can find more about Breath of Heaven music, about our dance team. You can donate and give financially if you want to help the ministry of Breath of Heaven. And more than anything, we just want to invite you to get connected with us on social media. And if you are anywhere near Jamestown, Tennessee, come join us on a community worship night. It's really the main central thing of what Breath of Heaven does in this season is we come together and we worship with people from all different churches, all different backgrounds. It's a wonderful time. We'd love you to come join us in downtown Jamestown on a Friday night. And lastly, if this message was encouraging to you about prayer, there's another eight parts of this series And they are all labeled by the topic that they cover, the topic of prayer that they cover. So I want to invite you to go back through on Apple or Spotify, wherever you find your podcasts, or on YouTube or our website. If there's an area of prayer that you would like to explore, this is a resource that we put together. It's biblical. It is great foundational teachings on communion through your prayer life with God. I pray that it blesses you. Go check out some of those other messages if you haven't heard them yet. All right. Have a wonderful day, friends. We'll see you soon.